Hey there, fans of different uh, media formats. As uh, as you know, I am as well. This is the uh, four track uh, stereo combo unit from the early 1960s. It is not only a four track player, but it is also a four track recorder. It can record and play back four track tapes. Um, I found this on Craigslist and it has a turntable, as you can see on your left there. The uh, I'm, I'm currently in the middle of restoring it, so I've got all of the knobs taken off the front. And uh, I've placed the turntable back on the unit just simply for show, but the motor in the unit is completely seized up. It's got some kind of problem, probably just for, from sitting for so many years. But uh, I've already restored the four-track player, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you in just a moment. But uh, just wanted to give you a little history here. If you don't know anything about four-track tapes, uh, four-track is the predecessor to the eight-track tape. And four-track came out in the early 60s, and uh, it was discovered by a guy named, well, he, he was his real name wasn't Madman Muntz, but uh, that was what he was commonly known as. He was an electronic sales guy, and he saw that the Fidelva Pack cartridge was used and radio stations and thought, hey, that's a great idea. I could take those and modify them and use them in cars. And so he did. And he took the format and uh, and duplicated tapes. And I'll show you some tapes here in a minute as well. But uh, he made this uh, format uh, a success. And even famous people had four-track uh, cartridge players in their car. At one point, uh, they made four-track and eight-track combination players. In other words, the player could play both 4-track and 8-track tapes. But uh, I'll show you a little closer up here what a 4-track unit is about. I'm going to remove this dust cover here. Now, what I've done to this unit so far is I've taken this whole piece here apart and I've uh, put some lubrication on the motor because it was playing too slow. Luckily, the belt that was the original belt in it is still in good shape. It uh, it still works, um, and of course the motor still works. So uh, that part was was good. Uh, there was some kind of connector cable on the inside here. There's like a firewall in between the the turntable and this uh, playback unit on this side, and there was a connector cable that connected it across the firewall, and. Uh, there was a couple of wires that just came off. They were just bad solder joints. And I plugged those on and that gave me audio back. That was a very strange problem. But no capacitors had to be replaced. No transistors had to be replaced. I mean, the amplifier in this thing works like a charm. So what does that tell you? It tells you that they used quality parts um, to build this unit. And it was made in Japan as well. So that's kind of cool. It has uh, multiple inputs on the back for uh, different things. You can hook uh, a microphone up to it. You can hook an auxiliary and it has MPX which I think refers to a tuner. Um, and again it plays back and records and it has uh, level meters on the front there for your, for your monitoring of the, um, the uh, recording. We have a level, a balance, and an equalization control here in the front which Basically was uh, later renamed Tone Control. It's basically a treble cut. And then you've got uh, a four-speed turntable over here with uh, 78, 33, 45, and 16 speeds. And of course it is a changer as well. So let's take a look at the, uh, the four-track format. One of the things you'll notice that's different about it is it does not have a capstan, I mean a uh, pinch roller, inside the cartridge. But the pinch roller itself is part of the actual unit. And you'll see it pop up there and meet the capstan to drive the tape. And it's very strange the way they designed these originally. I, it's, it's like a platform that you put the tape on as opposed to a cartridge chute, you know, or a bay that you would put it in. I mean, it's, it's literally you, you set it on the platform and push it forward, which is kind of bizarre. Um, a tracks have a, a sensing foil on the tape, which causes it to change the position of the head to play the different tracks on the tape. 4-track does not have that and it has a manual switch to switch the position of the head. So if you don't flip this switch sometime within the, the playback period, 
then uh, you will hear the same program over and over. And as you can see on this particular tape here, the Sandy Nelson tape, uh, there are two programs. So you have program one and program two. And as program one plays over and over, again, you have to manually switch it to program two. Um, it's interesting that these distributors uh, stuck their labels on here. And of course, I'm from St. Louis, and, and here it shows that this was from a, a St. Louis music distributor. Very interesting. It's got some cool uh, cover art on the back of it. So the old couple that I bought this from uh, were actually um, advertising the tapes themselves. And here's this huge box of tapes uh, that they had for sale. And I said, hey, do you have a player? And I've never owned a four track player before. So um, I was excited to get a player to go along with it so that I could experience this amazing old format. And here's some of the, the titles that are in here. Wizard of the Banjo, Eddie Peabody, uh, Billy Vaughn, Christmas Carols. We've got uh, some oldies but goodies tapes in here. Some some. It's funny that this was made in the 60s and they're calling it oldies. But uh, yeah, 50s music, 10 years earlier. We've got uh, some homemade tapes here. Uh, we got uh, Nat King Cole. Somebody nicely labeled them all with uh, one of those little label makers. Buck Owens is on that one. Some of these don't have anything on them. And of course, it's cool to see the pre-recorded ones. Like this one here, uh, Ray Charles, Crying Time, Ray Charles. From that same music distributor there in St. Louis. Um, let's see. Here we got uh, Ferlin Husky on Capitol Records and you'll see there on the right side of the label there the uh, the months name fixing the focus there see there months alright so this was a, a months recorded in fact it says here on the back distributed by months stereo pack not affiliated with months TV in uh, in California Capitol Records Hollywood and find Hollywood California so uh, so really cool history behind uh, this tape format. As we were uh, looking for ways to to get audio into our cars. Um, oh yeah, here's one that's got the this one's got the Madman Months uh, logo on it there, which is the little little pirate guy right there. Boots Randolph Yakety Sax. Pretty neat. And as you can see, the uh, most of these tapes are clear, and the uh, it's an endless loop cartridge, just like a track. Same size tape, okay. Except we're not dividing the tape into four different programs. We're dividing it into two. So let's go over and see this unit operate. I've got a couple of cheap Durabrand uh, miniature speakers. There's one. There's the other here on my workbench. So uh, let's see what this thing does here. And we'll switch it to program two. The Apple iPhone would record in stereo. It does not, so uh, you don't get to hear the cool stereo sound separation coming off of that tape. Uh, this guy here, Herb Alpert, I see his records all the time in tapes at uh, Goodwill. He must have been a really popular guy back in his day. Let's uh, let's give this one a whirl. <laughs>
four-track cartridge has a little bit more uh, or a little bit better presence to it than uh, than eight tracks eight tracks have a, a real muffled kind of um, I don't know almost a distant sound to them it, it doesn't really feel like the music is up in your face it's kind of off in the distance somewhere I don't know what uh, what that's about but four track definitely has a little bit more oomph than, uh, than the eight track format and they both run at the same speed which is is interesting too here's a uh, Al Martino. And you can switch it over to the other uh, side, and we may have reached the end of the program here. You know, we've got silence on both sides. So what will happen is, is the program will uh, rotate around and start all over again. The joy of endless loop cassettes. I mean, uh, I guess the, the not so fun part about it is you can't rewind it, you can't fast forward it. It just is what it is. Let's see here, what else we got? Uh, there was one I was playing the other day, and it, it was just a mixture of of stuff that somebody had recorded off of record, I think. Well, that tape's obviously in really good shape. Actually, it sounds like it flipped upside down. It sounds like it's playing backwards. Okay, that's not a good one. Uh, let's see, what about this uh, Buck Owens tape? Wow, some of these I have not even tried yet. Hey, that's Johnny Cash. So there you go folks, this is 4-Track at its finest. Well, maybe not at its finest, I've definitely seen some finer 4-Track machines, but uh, the fact that this one will play is uh, pretty cool. Um, whoever engineered this setup here with this big metal plate and the way the motor's mounted in there and stuff was definitely smoking something because that was a pain in the neck to get apart. And um, it, uh, I managed to get it back together, but good grief, that was that was crazy. It's got these brackets back here that are holding this plate up, you know. So there's a, a little S-shaped bracket that goes up underneath there. And then this screw holds that in. And then this is actually holding this plate up. So uh, just kind of a bizarre uh, engineering there, almost like it was a afterthought. But anyway, uh, my goal is to uh, get this completely restored as best I can and then... Uh, possibly give it a sale on uh, eBay. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, trip back in time to the early 1960s and the four-track Fidelipak cartridge. See you later.